What's up, homies? Harry over at Tackle Express. The weather is finally cleared, and the season is here. And I'm here to get you prepared to put some fish on the deck this season, whether you guys are headed out offshore fishing bluefin or going to any of our local islands fishing yellowtail or white sea bass. I'm going to show you all the necessities and all the basics that you are going to want to have to put some fish on the deck this season. For those of you guys that are going to be going out targeting yellowtail, one of the most favorite things I like to fish in this early season especially is a yo-yo iron. For instance, this is a Salus 6X Junior, one of the most well-known yo-yo irons on the market to this day. I like to fish that on a 30 to 60 pound rated rod, a narrow, tall, spooled reel, such as an Avid JX, a Pen Fathom 25 narrow. There's a variety of other options that will work great as well. And I typically like to fish a 40 pound mainline or even 50 on my yo-yo setups. Um, but as the season progresses and the fish get a little more active, it's a lot warmer out. That's when we're gonna pick up something like a surface iron. For instance, this is a 7X Salus surface iron on a 9 foot 20 to 50 pound rod and a Shimano Tranks 500. There are other options in terms of reels that will work just fine as well, such as the Shimano Trinidad, the Daiwa Saltiga, and so many more. Um, when I fish this, obviously on my 20 to 50 pound rated rod, 9 foot jig stick, I'm fishing at a minimum of 40 pound top shot or leader, upwards of 50 pound. Just so the sheer factor when they're chasing a jig, they're not looking at the line. They are looking at what's in front of them, and you're going to get bit. And for those of you guys that are going to be going out and targeting the sea bass side of things, I like to have at least one dropper loop tied up. For instance, a 30 to 40 pound rigged outfit with an 8 to 12 ounce sinker and a 5.0 to 7.0 owner Aki twist hook, which is fantastic for all of this fresh dead, full size squid or even live for instance. Um, but not always are sea bass extremely lazy, which is why the dropper loop is so proficient for them is because a lot of the time they're extremely lazy. They don't want to exert a whole lot of effort. They're taking their time just in real slow and nonchalant as the squid starts to die. So that's why the fresh dead is so popular. That's when we could take a lead head and take a white fluke like such. This is a great way to target a fish that maybe wants to get a little more fired up and wants to chase something. It's still made to be fished very slow because with that lighter jig head, a big plastic bait, it's going to have a lot of drag and it's fairly buoyant. So the way that I like to fish that is throw it down, work it through the current, and kind of up, down, up, down, just real nice and slow. Figure what a squid would do, just sitting in the current, just doing his thing. That's how I like to fish that. But also a lead head with fresh dead or live squid can be very good, and as well as the slider rig. All those options will work fantastic for sea bass. And again, I like to fish from as light as 20 pound for some scenarios, whether the fish are a little more finicky, wanting to eat a slider or a lead head on squid, and I'll fish as heavy as 40 pound, which is usually on my dropper loop setup. But for those of you guys that are going to be headed out offshore fishing all of our local bluefin, this part's going to be for you guys. Um, this is the part where it gets a little more difficult. For the sheer factor of just how vast this topic is in terms of conditions, lures, reels, the whole shebang about it. But the biggest thing and the reason why is because we have fish that are as small as 20 pounds and as big as three and 400 pounds. So that's a big, big range of fish that we need to kind of cover and take into consideration. So with that being said, I'm going to try and help you slim it down as much as possible. That way you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get anything and everything that you need. I'm going to try and get you what you absolutely need. For instance, going out for bluefin, I like to use as small as a size 1 and as big as a 4-0 depending on the size of the fish, the conditions, and what I'm doing exactly. For instance, one of the most popular rigs for our Southern California bluefin fishing has been the sinker rig. It's been proven time and time again, year after year, it is always proven. It is never a guarantee, but it's definitely something I put my money with. It is very, very productive. And there's two different styles to that sinker rig, and I'll show you the two right now. 
For instance, this was the standard sinker rig. 12 to 8 to 12 ounce sinker with a rubber band, three to four foot a liter to a ringed circle hook, which is exactly what this is here. Um, and with this rig specifically, it, it is a very nice rig. It works, but you have to fish this one slower. And the reason being is because when you have your sinker and it starts going to the desired depth that we're going to want to get to, if you send it down as fast as you can, because you need to be at the spot to get bit, if they're rolling through in and out, you need to be there. This rig is probably not the greatest one, and the reason being is because when this sinker goes down, your bait's up here following, and all it's doing is this. Spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning until you get to your desired depth, and by the time you reach the fish that you're looking to catch, your bait's half dead and no longer appealing to the fish that you're trying to target. So you go from hooking a lot more fish to a lot less fish for some reasons on this rig when you have to go fast. With that being said, in the conditions, you need to be there right now. You don't have any time to waste. That's when the drop shot method's gonna come into play. That's gonna be the very similar style rigging. The only difference is your sinker's gonna be on the bottom like a drop shot rig would, rather than this one having the sinker above your hook. So this rig is going to be really good for when you need to get down to the fish extremely fast. And you need to put a certain presentation. You need that bait to be put perfectly. This is the rig to do it. You have, again, three to four foot of leader to your sinker. You tie your main line to that ring. And then you tie your tag end from the ring to your sinker, obviously. And then depending on size of fish is what will determine the size of the hook as well as the pound test that I'm going to be fishing. For instance, if it's the smaller grade fish, 30 to 60 pounders, I'm probably gonna fish a 40 to 60 pound sinker rig with a size one or size 20 circle hook. But if the fish so so happen to grow and get a lot bigger, they're 100 to 200 pounds, that's a much, much bigger fish. I'm gonna put away the 50 and 60 pound, I'm gonna grab nothing less than 80, I'm preferably gonna try and grab a 100 pound setup with a 3.0 to 4.0 circle hook. Again, it is all dependent on the size of the fish, the conditions that are going on. With that being said, hopefully that's gonna be able to weed you guys out of which sinker rig you're gonna to need to use for the time being and the conditions that's being put up against for you. And with that being said, talking on line classes and everything are fish ranging from as small as 20 pounds and as big as three and 400 pounds. I suggest going out with a rod and reel setup to fish 30 and 40 pound tests, a setup to fish 50 and 60, and then a setup to fish 80 and 100. But you want at least one 100 pound setup for all of our multi-day fishing. For the sheer factor, we're gonna be going out for multiple days. There's a, the ocean's very big. It's not just like, going to the freshwater lake, going from spot to spot. This place is very big. There's a lot of fish out there. So day one, you might be catching nothing but 30 to 60 pounders on that 40 to 50 pound outfit. Super fun fishing. It's one of my favorites. But the next day now, alrighty guys, we're not using any light line setup. Do not bring anything out less than 80 and 100 pound because you guys are fishing fish from 80 upwards of 200 pound tests. So it really depends on the class of the fish for the time being. And again, that can change from school to school. You may be fishing 30 pounders for the last two hours, and then one school rolls in that's nothing but straight jumbos and cows. Again, it is all dependent on the conditions and how the fish want to react. Fast forward through the year, from the beginning all the way to the end, the conditions change and the different styles of fishing will also kind of change along with that. With that being said, in this early season fishing, it's a lot of fly lining, um, the knife jigs can be very productive. Just for instance, the Player Supreme just went out and caught limits of bluefin. They were that 20 to 50 pound grade on that 30, 40, 30 to 40 pound fly lining outfits, and they are catching fish at night as well. Anywhere from that 60 to upwards of 200 pound class fish. So that's why I like to have the 30 and 40, a 50 and 60, and at least one 100 pound setup. 
Um, and fast forward through the middle of the year, like I call from June to right around August. The changing for bluefin specifically changes drastically. And the reason being is they start chasing the bait, which they always do, but they start confining them and pushing them to the surface where we get our term foamer. The only thing when it comes to the foamer is a lot of us have experienced foamer fishing can be extremely tough for some of us. And that's not necessarily anybody's problem. It's just the bluefin being so in tune and dialed in to what they are eating. They're not looking for anything else except what they are eating. With that being said, the bait that they're targeting is real, real small micro bait. Stuff that's almost too small for us to even put a hook to get a bite on. It's almost that small. So now we got guys trying to go out there fishing jigs to mimic that bait, which is great. If you can find a jig that is as small as it needs to be to, for the style of fishing that we're doing on that micro bait side of things, but it also needs to be castable. If you get the small jig, it's great, but you need to be able to cast it. In this early season fishing, they're not really on that micro bait yet. So I'm going to be using 80 to 100 gram jigs. While well, fast forward to that June to August time frame, I'm going to significantly slim down and go from as small as 35s and as heavy as 60s. Something that's still easily able to be casted, but still small enough to try and fit into the profile of the bait that they're fishing. Another option that has been extremely popular the last couple years of our Southern California bluefin fishing has been a clear popper. The reason of why that is is because they can't make out what it is. Anything that has a solid color, you can see. This is the size that it is, 110%. And some of you guys in the camera might be saying, oh, Harry, that's an eight and a half inch bait. Yes, but being clear in the water, it distorts the overall profiled size. So when the bluefin's looking up at this bait that you're throwing, it can't isolate that it's an eight and a half inch bait. All it sees is a disturbance on the surface, which triggers a reaction bite, which is, again, why this has been so popular the last couple years. And right after August through September, October, and November, that's when a lot of the time our big fish show up. Um, not always, but a lot of the time that is the case, and we have guys going out from the private boaters, the charter boaters, everybody. Anything from the Nomad Mad Max, flying the kite, um, there's a variety of different options that we can do in that later season, including the knife jigging. Um, in that later season, a lot of the time, the weather will typically lay down a little bit. It'll be a little easier to get out there. You're not getting beat up quite as much. And that's when we can usually downsize the jigs at times. But again, it is all dependent upon the conditions. If you go out in the late season and it's blowing 20 miles an hour, again, I'm going to suggest a four and 500 gram knife jig to get down as fast as possible and to stay in the zone of which you are trying to target your fish but on those nice, beautiful, glass, calm days. I'm gonna be taking that smaller grade stuff, that 100, 130 gram, as well as some of the heavier stuff, because again, conditions can change. But in that nice, calm weather, a flat fall is a really good presentation, being a broader spectrum bait, it has a nice fluttering fall, which is definitely very appealing for some of those fish that may not be storming through in and out just like that. They're hanging out a little bit, but if you send a big 400 gram jig and just go right past them, sometimes they're not looking for that. They want it to flow through them, not past them. So with all that being said, guys, I hope I weeded out a lot of the if, hows, what's, and buts. But obviously, if you have any questions of any sort, please feel free to stop on by the shop. Give us a call. We're always here to help, guys. And with that being said, guys, I hope you guys are as prepared as you can be. And I hope I answered all the questions that you might have had. So all there is to do is to book a trip, be prepared, and put some fish on the deck this season. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And feel free to comment below with any questions that you guys might have. Tight lines, Harry from Tackle Express, guys.